Hey everybody, I'm Greg Zoll and welcome to another CIQ demo. So today I'm going to be showing you how to use Ascender, right, our automation platform, to configure a local Rocky repository. So why is that useful, right? It could be a, a couple of different, well, a few different reasons probably. So one being, um, I don't have a lot of internet bandwidth, right? Like every time I do an update on my systems, right, it's like a DNF update, it's going to go to the internet, it's going to pull all that stuff down. Now, that's probably not too big a deal if I've got one or two machines. So say I have thousands of machines and I'm doing updates, right? That can be uh, kind of a hog on your bandwidth. So that's one instance. Another could be you have a very secure environment. So your machines don't just have default access to the internet. So they need to actually get that from some local system or source, right? And so this is going to be kind of a quick and easy way to show you how to do that. I have an associated blog post. Uh, and ultimately, there is a Rocky guide that shows how to do a portion of this. I've kind of built on it and have it do all the extra stuff. And all those links should be in there as well. So let's take a look really quick at my uh, automation here in Ascender. So I'm going to come into the job template section. I've already created this simple job template. I'm going to look for repo, I believe is what I named it. Rocky local repository. So in here, I have a couple of cool things going on. Uh, one is I'm actually prompting for some information. I'm using something called a survey. So I'm going to go into this job template itself. I'm going to look at survey right here. And for those of you in the know, it just gives you the ability to pop up some really easy, hey, fill in the blank information for your users. And so here I'm saying, do you want to sync the repo now? So one thing I do in this playbook is I have the option to, at the very end, go ahead and fire off the synchronization. I'm setting a cron job, right? So we'll run on an even schedule. But at the end of this, do I want it to go ahead and just do a quick update? Yes, I do, because I'm doing a demo and I want you to be able to see what's going on. So I'm going to jump back to the template itself and I'm just going to click the little rocket sheet here and I'm going to launch it. So do I want to sync the repo now? I've got it defaulting to false. I'll change that to true. I'll click next and launch. And then my automation is off and running. So while that happens, or rather while that runs, I'm going to pop over to the playbook itself and I want to show you a couple of the knobs you may or may not want to turn. So here's the playbook. It doesn't look anything too crazy, but I do have some variables in the variable section here that are useful. So I have web path. And so this is going to be the path to your web repository. So um, it's basically the root folder where all the files are going to get synchronized to, right, right in there. A script path. So this is using a bash script to actually do the uh, rsync. And ultimately that's what it's doing. It's just rsyncing these files and making sure it, it uh, grabs the uh, newest version or synchronizes uh, everything that happens to be in there. Uh, and so you want to update those paths to match whatever your environment looks like. So the sync hour frequency, I have this set up to where it will just do it based on hours. So you just put the number of hours in there. You want it to wait in between synchronizing. Uh, configure web server. Now, the uh, the guide we have online assumes you already have a web server configured. I didn't want to assume that. So if you are, say, setting up a server from scratch and there is no web server on here, if you set this to true, it will go and it will install an Nginx server, configure all the settings for you as is appropriate so that it will, you know, kind of have it browsable and uh, ready for you to utilize. Now, if you underneath that have S, uh, SE Linux config true, uh, that will set up the uh, the web folder. It'll kind of uh, re uh, reset the uh, permission structure in there because it's also going to make sure all these folders exist. So the assumption is they probably don't. So it will create that folder. And then it will just make sure that uh, SC Linux is configured properly. Now, it's only going to do that if you are installing the web server. So if you want it to be a different behavior than that, you might need to modify this. And then also you can see the sync now uh, option is there. By default, I have it set to false, um, just so it won't synchronize on the regular interval. Um, but in my case, I wanted it to actually be true. So all of these things, you may want to adjust uh, these settings. You may want to adjust the defaults. Now, let me scroll down a little bit. <clears throat> when we're doing our synchronizing, we are doing our sync, but we're using an exclusion file. So what that allows you to do is specify certain files or folders that you don't actually want to synchronize. And so in our environment, this is uh, the exclusion of file kindly provided by my uh, associate, my compadre, uh, my uh, ninja friend, Jimmy Connor. 
Uh, so here uh, you could see is just a, a big list of things that we don't necessarily want to pull down. Some aren't going to be used in our environment. Um, some may be in yours, right? So you might want to modify this list. Um, but for us, you know, it's kind of helpful. It also means there's fewer space requirements on your server, right? So if you're not just pulling everything down, you're going to consume less space, which is more efficient both on your bandwidth as well as on your storage. Now, keep in mind, once everything is rsync, it's not just going to pull everything down over and over and over. That's kind of not the nature of rsync. It's going to compare the two and really just pull uh, things that have changed. So it is fairly space efficient. A lot of this is utilizing templates as well. So if you take a look at the template folder here, you can see kind of all of my templates I'm using, right? It excludes the Nginx and the repository synchronization script. So feel free to pop in there. Now, let me pop back over to our job. It was successful, it completed. So uh, now that everything has run, it is saying that it is syncing correctly. Let me jump to the very bottom. Yep. So it is synchronizing now. So let me tab over to my uh, terminal and we'll watch that grow just to make sure that it's actually working. All right, so here we are. This is the uh, terminal on the server. I'm just doing a watch on df-h and right there on the rl-root, you should see the space being used increment slowly. I've got it refreshing, I think every two seconds. Yeah, it says in the top right, as you can see, it's actually uh, pulling all that stuff in. So it successfully worked. You can see it went really fast. There's not a lot to talk about here. The steps are pretty laid out. Everything's going to be documented in the blog post. So um, if you have any questions or comments or you'd make any modifications, I would love to hear from you. Feedback is a gift and it is almost the holiday season. So uh, feel free to give me any of those. Um, if you would like any assistance doing any of this inside of your environment, please feel free to reach out. We do support on all of our products, and so we would be happy to hear from you. If nothing else, happy automating, happy uh, local repoing, and we'll see you next time. Bye.